Hi everyone. So I have a tutorial for you today or kind of a craft along. Um, this is inspired by Wendy, I think it was. I saw she did something kind of similar. So and if you follow me on Instagram, I promised I would do a little tutorial for this. This is made from three envelopes and we'll get into that in just a second. There's the back, the pocket, and a tag. Whoops, throw it off the camera. And then, so after you open that up, this flips over and you have a pocket here to tuck things in. And then I've put some papers in. And then there's a little pocket here. And then that flips out. And then this flips over. And so you have a pocket over here and a pocket over here and then lots of little trimmings and such gorgeous papers. So these are papers that I purchased from uh, Melody um, at MelodyMade.com. She's the um, uh, admin for the Newbie Junk Journal Makers Group, I think is what it's called. Um, but I purchased some uh, Stamperia or Stamperia, however you pronounce it. And um, Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> It'll come to me. <laughs> um, I purchased some papers from her and then these these lovely papers came from Stephanie at My Porch Prints. So I don't really have any more of these gorgeous papers here that I purchased. Chow Bella. That's what it was called. Chow Bella and Stemperia papers. I knew it would come to me. See? But I do have other pretty papers. So we're going to make this today. Um, here's one I've started last night. This one's going to be Christmas themed, as you can see. Um, so it's all all inked up and ready to go. And then I've got some, some papers ready to go on the inside. So what we're going to need, um, and you could change the sizes for this to suit whatever your needs are. But I wanted to go with something a little a little larger so that you could incorporate a small journaling section in it and these would be great for say seasonal journals where you know you really like Christmas time you know you're not you're not journaling for two and three months in it you know maybe you just want it for a month so you're not going to need a lot of paper and a lot of room so it'd be a nice little size for doing that so what I have here is three um, these would be greeting card sized envelopes I'm going to grab a ruler here Maybe, oh, it's right in front of my face. E. Um, these would be, yeah, you like your large greeting card size. Um, this is about eight and three quarters by five and three quarters. Um, and then I have an extra one over here that's just a square one or a square ish, five and three quarter by five and three quarter. Um, or any other small envelope, you know, sometimes you can find them about, about this size. Um, and that's what makes that little small flip out pocket there. So what we're going to do first is score the flaps on these. So let me grab my handy dandy scoreboard and uh, my broken um, little doodad here that I like to score my papers with. I don't like using the little thin bone folder thing. Um, and I am scoring these three envelopes on the 1 8 2 8 and 3 8 line past, past the factory fold. So I'm just going to line, line it up here. Here at the factory fold is right here at the 5 and 3 quarter mark. So I'm just going to score this one at 1 more eighth past it. I, I don't know how I broke my my little embossing stylus thingy. <laughs> I guess I don't know my own strength sometimes or what. I don't know. I just snapped it. Uh, so I'm like a nerd with tape on his glasses. I only have tape on my stylus thing. At least it's colorful washi tape, right? My husband uses black electrical tape for fixing everything. All right, that one I scored at two eighths or one quarter past the initial factory fold. 
And then this next one, I'm going to score at 3 eighths past the initial factory fold. One, two, three. And I did not do that in my original book. The one I just showed you, I didn't do it in that one. Um, and I wish I had. Um, and the reason is, what did I do with it? Oh, it's over here. <clears throat> the reason is, is that, you know, by the time you get things in it and it gets kind of chunked up, it doesn't, things don't want to fold very well and lay very well. So these little flaps kind of need some scoring lines, almost like a, a spine to give them some room. So that's what I've done there. And, and I made sure I did that in my, my Christmas one. Of course, this one's not full yet, but it will be. So that's why we're doing that. One eighth, two eighths, and three eighths on the folds past the original factory mark. That was loud. I do apologize. I was trying to put that back in the cabinet down there where it goes, but it's now on the floor instead. And that's okay. So you're just gonna fold on those marks to get them prepped and ready to go. Or even before you score on those marks, you could go ahead and ink up all of your edges um, if it's easier to do that first. Doesn't really matter what order. And see, and this one's gonna be tiny. That's okay. We really only want enough room on that one because we're just gonna do a couple little pockets with a few tags in it. This one's gonna be big enough to put our journaling papers in and then the 3 8 one will be the flap that's going to go around the front that's why it's the biggest okay so then at this time you would want to go ahead and ink up all of your edges and get that all ready to go so we can get it glued together and paper put on but I do have a set I've already inked up so you don't have to watch me do that thank goodness um, okay, and then I have gone ahead, oh, I forgot to tell you that. Then with your smaller envelope, what you're gonna wanna do, I left mine because it's just gonna have a few things tucked inside of it, so it doesn't really need too much of a, um, a spine here, so I left mine as it was. Um, well, actually, that one, I gave it a little bit of an eighth inch, but you don't really need it. I didn't do it in the other one. And then what you're going to do is trim off part of it because when you attach it, for this one, for me, it depends on the size of your envelope. For me, my smaller one is almost too wide. So I just cut some of it off. I trimmed, I trimmed part of it off. Okay, and so what that does is it gives you a nice open pocket. So we're gonna end up covering the sides and then we'll have this, this pocket to slide things in. So you'll want to do that as well and then get everything inked up. So I may need to bring my other one back to help me. Okay, so this is the flap one, the big one, the big 3 8 fold. So that one's going to go on the bottom. Then we have our 2 8 inch one. Sorry, I have to see how they come together. <laughs> I'll get it just a minute okay there we go our smallest one is our 1 8 one we're going to turn it like this with the flap down okay and it's going to attach to our 2 8 inch one like this okay all right so let's grab our 1 8 um, one and our 2 8 inch one Okay, the 1 8 and the 2 8. So we're going to put some glue right here on the flap of the 1 8 inch spine 1, whatever we want to call it. I'm just using some tacky glue here, or tacky glue fabric fix here because it, it does dry fast um, for our purposes. You can use double sided tape, tacky glue whatever you want to use, art glitter glue, whatever's your favorite. Um, I did try some of that um, Elmer's tacky glue stuff and I didn't care for it in this project, but. Okay, so here's my, my envelope with the two, eighths, two eighths inch spine and I'm, I'm putting it on this side. Okay, so I've got the nice side up and I'm going down on the flap. Okay. 
Okay, and I want to make sure I'm not going over that little spine I created. I'm going to go right up to it, but I still have a, a little spine, as you can see there. Okay? All right, so I have my nice side up, then I have the inside of the envelope, okay? And then the other one with the 2 eighths inch spine, I've glued on top of the flap with the nice side up, okay? All right, and then that, bring back my one with the 3 eighths inch spine, that is going to go on here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the spine, or excuse me, the flap of this one to the back of that envelope, okay? Just like that. So I'm going to turn it, turn it over. Try to get through this without dogs interrupting. just really well okay actually I don't know why I turned that over let's turn it back okay and I'm just going up to that first score mark I want to leave my spine in there okay now I'm going to flip it over and rub it down Okay, so when I put it all together, then I have my 3 8 inch spine here, flap, okay? Then this opens, and there's my little 1 8 inch spine right here, okay? And then this opens this way, and here's my 2 8 inch or 1 4 spine on this side, okay? All right, just like that. Then what I want to do, did I put my little envelope in this one yet? Trying to see where I ended up putting that one. I guess I didn't put it in there yet. Nope, nope, I didn't. We can decide where to put that here in a little bit. I think I'm not going to put that in yet. Okay, now what we want to figure out next is if you want to put on the type of closure that I did, which was the uh, uh, seam binding wrapping around from the back across the front, which it works really well that way because it holds your flap down really well because there's enough pressure on it but it's not pulling on any paper you know it's not pulling against the grain or against the paper so it's not putting any pressure on paper to tear it so it works really well to do it that way so I think that's probably how we'll do this one um, and I had made myself a notation there so I wouldn't forget to glue my seam binding in and I just covered it up but that's okay I remembered so we're looking at about the halfway mark and I'm just going to eyeball it and I'm just going to put a nice little row of glue here and I'm not too too worried about it it's going to have another piece of paper over the top but I do want to make sure it's not going to get pulled out of there maybe just a smidgen more here okay all right we're going to let that dry for a minute now I've cut a few papers for the front and the back so I have that part done for us and I would love I'd love to make another one that looks just like this but I don't have any more of that paper um, but what I do have is some of this paper and and a lot of you might recognize that paper pad I'm gonna grab it really quick um, it is from Prima it's a Prima marketing pad um, I don't know it's been out forever um, 2017 it says okay not forever a couple of years um, and I've had this one forever um, this is the tales of you and me um, it's a prima marketing 
paper pad. But it's a nice, heavy, double-sided paper. A lot of pretty papers in here. Um, and, you know, I just, I don't use it that much. Um, I'm not a huge pink person, but it does have some really cute papers in it, so that's what we're going to use for this. I've chosen this one for the front. So I think that'll look real nice, and then I think we'll do some kind of row of, of roses or something here on the side to, to accent it. And then I've chosen this paper for the back. Now remember on the back I have a, a pocket, and I'm going to do that here too, because um, I don't care for the, the curtains. Um, I don't get that, so, <laughs> so I'm going to put a pocket on the back that will cover that and then leave these, these pretty roses and, and receipts and stuff up here. So I'm going to go ahead and ink these up and I'm going to go ahead and glue them on. So I'm gluing my front one on this front piece and I'm going to glue my back one on the back piece over the top of my seam binding. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do and then I'll come back and turn the camera back on. Okay, so inked it all up and glued that on the front and this on the back. Now I want to work on the flap. I've chosen this piece of paper because I think it would make a pretty good accent here on the flap. Um, so I'm going to just get it marked up. And if you notice when I did the front and backs, I left just a small bit around the edges. Sort of like how we used to do when we made mini albums and things like that. If you have a <clears throat> a background in making mini albums, so that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm just backing it off a little bit on the flap, and I for now I'm going to cut it to fit the wide part of my flap, not the narrow part, and then I'll trim it down from there. So I'm I'm backing it up pretty close here on the back edge. Mark just above. Okay, let me scoot it down so I can get the right width. And we'll go right about there. So I'm going to cut that with my paper trimmer and I'll come right back. Okay, so I've cut my, my little rectangle for the flap here. And um, like I mentioned, the flaps here are angled. Okay, put that in a little bit closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay something straight along over here and I'm going to put it flush on the corner over here and then I'm just going to follow the right angle so I can draw a nice straight line that should give me about the right angle to cut off. Okay, so I'm going to do it on that side. I'm going to do it again on this side. I'm just I'm lining up this corner first and then I'm deciding what angle I need to put this at so I'm just kind of following the same angle as the envelope flap that looks pretty good so I'm gonna cut this off right here okay. and I'm just gonna do this by hand and I'm gonna just slightly round the corner there because my envelope flaps have rounded corners. So I'll just kind of round that up instead of squaring it off. Yeah, see, just like that. Looks pretty good. Ink it up. this on real quick. So a little tip, I think I've, I've showed some people this before. I learned this from Artie Maze. This isn't my little trick, but Fabri-Tac often acts like a volcano. If you squeeze it slightly first and then tip your glue up to where it starts to run down the tip, there it comes. Okay, and keep it squeezed. Squeeze a little harder if you need the glue to come back out. Don't let go. Keep squeezing. Well, you don't have to squeeze, squeeze, but just keep it pushed in. 
And then when you're done, squeeze it back. Hear that air come back in when you when the air comes back in, it keeps it from being like a volcano and spewing and it works great every time. So, like I said, not my trick. Learned that from Andrea. But I hear a lot of people talking about Fabri-Tac doing that. I used to just hurry up and stick the cap back on it really quick. I'm like, ha, take that, you know, stick the cap on there. <laughs> but then it was a mess when you take the cap off. All right, so there's our little flap. And then now we need the little button um, closure. So we're going to do that. Let me grab my brown paper. Here's a little scrap I had when I was um, trimming off one of those shorter, one of those smaller envelopes. So, and then another little trick I learned from Andrea for doing these little button tab thingies. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and glue this together now because I'm going to make that little button be more than one thickness of paper. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of glue that together now. But I used to punch the circles first and then I would try to punch a hole in it and try to get it in the center and it just, it never, it never worked. I never, I just never could find the exact center. But she showed us to punch the hole first and then take our hole punch and when it's already punched you get a better idea of where center is and I'm like how did I never know this before because this does work so much better see it's almost dead on I could have never done that before all right I am going to go ahead and glue this to one more layer and the trick is not to punch a bunch of them this way just your first one and then oops then punch out just plain holes because if you punch your little circles in them and then try to stack them they won't match up either so just punch a plain circle and glue it on I'm going to do it again until I get the thickness that I want because I want this to be sturdy. I mean, your ribbon's going to go around and around and around that thing a lot. So we want it to hold up. And that paper I'm using is pretty thin. It was from that envelope. If you're using thicker cardstock, then, you know, you won't need to do it this many times. Oops. Come on, glue. Okay. That should be good. Nice and sturdy. Okay, now that I have them all glued up, I know there's no way that's dry, and don't put wet stuff through your crocodile, but I'm going to do it anyway. Now that it's glued up, now you know where to punch through the rest of them because your hole's already been made. Okay. All right ink that up a little bit okay and then I want to I kind of want to make this centered just like the ribbon was so I'm going to mark it right under that ribbon right right about there I'm going to go ahead and punch my hole. And a lot of people always ask, should I get the handheld crocodile or the big bite? I would say, you know, it depends on how much room you have in your craft space, but I don't think you'll ever get the big bite and then regret it. You know, I don't think you'll ever say, oh, I wish I'd got the smaller one. Um, however, I have heard a lot of people who have gotten the handheld one and said they wish they got the bigger one. The handheld one for me was never even an option. I can't, um, I can't punch things with my hand that well. I don't even crochet anymore because my hands hurt me too much. Okay, so put that in there. And 
give it a little squish. All right. So, and the reason I did it now is because I want to cover that with, with my paper. So I've gone ahead and done it now. So that's gonna be cute. All right, now we need to choose our papers and whatnot for the rest of it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off while I select some more papers. Now pay special attention to your envelopes. Um, if yours are the kind that you lick and stick and not the peel kind, when you do your inside paper, you are going to want it to go all the way to the edge to cover that lick and stick part. Because if you stay away from it and then that gets wet or damp, um, then it'll be you know tacky or it might stick to your envelope when you close it. So if you're a lick and stick, that sounds terrible, um, go all the way to the edge. Actually, honestly, even if you're a peel and stick, you would want to go all the way to the edge too because you'd still have sticky. So really, yeah, no matter what kind of envelope you have, unless it's just plain with no adhesive at all, you know, then you'd want to go all the way to the edge. So I'm okay. I'm going to pick out some more papers and I'll come right back. Okay. This is what I've chosen for the inside. So I am on, I'm on the very inside here and this is the two eighth inch or the one quarter spine so this is the one that's going to have our little journal in it um, so this is what i've chosen for here and then this is what i've chosen for the flap and also to put down inside the envelope to coordinate i wanted something a little bit muted to draw more attention to this so what i'm going to do i i you have two options. You could you could do both envelopes and you could just cover these parts and then leave this so that you can have both of them for tucks. Now this is where my journal is going to go. I don't really want this here because then when I when I open back my journal, I'm trying to get past my journal pages to get things out of here and with this pocket and the pockets I'm going to have in here and the pocket on the back. I don't really need another pocket so I'm going to cover this one totally um, that's up to you so I am going to start on that end as soon as I find my pencil here it is so I'm gonna mark the height again I just want to be slightly less so that's gonna be my height Check it, make sure it's the same over here. Yep, that'll be good to go all the way across my paper zip when I cut. And then I'm going to cut for the width right about here. And I'm gonna leave the spine. I'm not gonna cover the spine. I may do that in some fabric or something later, but not right this second. And then I'm going to cut my paper. I want to cover the little, um, See this little piece right here I want to cover this too so when I cut my paper for this side I am going to go ahead and cut it the full the full width to here and then I'll trim it back okay so I'm going to cut those pieces let's go ahead and mark this one now I am doing mine to where it covers the flap and goes down and is the insert in here Okay, so I'm just going to, doesn't really matter how deep it goes. I'm gonna cut it about right here. And I want it to go all the way to the edge of my flap so I don't have any sticky. Okay, and then I am going to cut it just a hair shy of the full height. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that section out. All right, I will be right back. Okay, I am back. I've got my papers cut. However, I am already close to the 30 minute mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys for today. And then I will come back and uh, we will try to get this all finished up in the next video. Um, so yeah, I may go ahead and get this inked up and, and uh, trimmed out a little bit better before I come back to see you guys. So anyway, I hope that was fun and that you try one of your own. Um, if you do, make sure you tag me and let me know. I'd love to see it. Okay, everybody, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.